Today, we have a very special Star Wars treat for you. I'm Richard, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with one and only Anthony Daniels at C-3PO himself about his experiences in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, welcome to MCA Presents, and thank you very much for joining us. Um, so how are you doing in lockdown? How are you spending your time? Um, incredibly busy, actually. I, I don't quite know how, but I'm, I'm doing quite a lot by Zoom and Blue Jeans and Skype and so on, and readings for Disney, all that kind of thing. And I actually do have to go to uh, a studio shortly in, in Soho because my recording equipment isn't good enough for some high, well, higher tech than I can achieve. Maybe, you know, when I can really get out, I will invest in a small studio. But along with, the, you know, so many people, uh, I'm kind of making the best of it. Uh, we go out for walks every day. We're growing plants on, on the parapet um, and, and trying to just uh, stay cheerful and, and constantly amazed that this is happening. You know, I, I basically had to run away from America a few weeks ago now. So many plans in, uh, in various states were cancelled around us. And uh, we were lucky, I think, to get a flight back. So safe and well and uh, really taking care of ourselves. Also, I don't know, trying to take, take care of other people, which is kind of why I thought I would join you today. So um, do you have any advice for people who are find, might be finding isolation difficult? Yeah, isolation's tough, um, you know, not to be coy about it, playing 3PO, I was really isolated within that costume. And somehow, on all sorts of days, I really did have to kind of put my mind somewhere else that this would soon be over, and, and um, in a physical sense, that is. But intellectual and, and physical loneliness and isolation is, is tough. And I'm afraid you do have to find inner resources, you have to find distractions whether it's doing silly word puzzles or watching TV. One of the things I do, uh, normally I go to a gym, but of course that's closed. And I do exercise, you know, we've got, we've got a space where we have some free weights and a mat and a chair and all that kind of thing. I do half an hour every day, sit-ups, you know, all that answer. Nothing big, I don't like exercise, but it's amazing how good you feel afterwards. <laughs> and I do it first thing, get it out of the way. You don't have to think about it. So, um, obviously, Rise of Skywalker has recently come out on Blu-ray. It was the, the sort of the end of the Skywalker saga, and C-3PO had a really sort of important role to play in it. Was it nice that he was so pivotal in the movie? I was so chuffed. You know, um, I've written a book, and uh, one of the things I talk about <clears throat> was the delay in me getting a script. And JJ kept saying, "You've got to have the the." the, the Re most recent one because it kept changing <clears throat> and when I finally read it I was I was really pleased and um, I had such a blast filming it really uh, one of the things that slightly concerns me is that because there was so much in the finished film there were so many kind of more nuanced quieter moments that just had to disappear but I know they were on film I had a joy and a a heartache sometimes filming them. So I'm sorry they didn't make it to the final cut. Maybe one day there'll be an even longer version. <laughs> Pretty long film. So, so you, you mentioned your book there, I Am C-3PO. Um, so what prompted you to write it? I, mean, I guess you are, you're, you're kind of the mainstay, aren't you? You're the one who's been there all the way through. Look at that. Product placement or what. Um, I was asked to write if I would like to write a book and I thought, why not? because I had no idea how difficult it would be. <laughs> Even with a computer, it, it, was a, it was a ton of work over a year. And finally, of course, I was writing it <clears throat> during the film at Rise of Skywalker. So you have a lot of time on a set hanging around. And I was able to tap away. I remember one day <clears throat> they, uh, they said, we may need your, your feet, your knees in the shot with BB-8. So I, I sat in my easy up tent next to the set, listening to them, you know, take 34 and action, and then take 35 and, and I'm thinking, and time passed, lunch came, tea came, and I was typing away all the things that were happening around me. And then at the end of the day, they came terribly sorry. Um, we, we aren't going to need your feet. <laughs> and it was fine because I'd, I'd been working away, it was cool. And you know, still in the atmosphere of the set. Writing the book seemed like a good idea because, you know, there are 
it's structured around the 11 movies, the, the three trilogies and the other two. And then on those, around those things, I, I put other things, whether it was the Oscar ceremonies in, in Hollywood or whether it was the concert series I did, or talking about the 501st and the fans, and talking about people who forge things. Um, that drives me crazy. <clears throat> and please go to my website, anthonydaniels.com. Go to the dark side and you'll see hundreds of forgeries. Yeah, nightmare. Um, and I realized there were all sorts of little stories that maybe I had never told before, maybe I had told them at a convention. There were also pieces that I wanted to talk about how I felt really inside and sometimes i felt brilliant uh, and sometimes i felt really really down you know certainly way back in the original film that original uh, whatever it was called episode four wasn't an easy thing the transition between four and five and yeah i had some i had some bad times and i think it's important in talking about a life story that you you say brilliant times and, and not so good times because that's pretty much like everybody's life, except mine was this kind of public, non-public world. And so there is a range of emotions within it, because I wanted you know, to tell the truth then. So uh, thinking back to 1970, what, it would be 1976, I guess, when you first got the part, um, what did you think of the role? You know, because robots back then weren't so sort of oh. charismatic, they you know, were quite sort of stilted and what have you. So, so what was it that appealed to you about 3PO? Well, it's totally in the book. I read it. The trouble is now, whenever I talk about it, I say it's, it's in the book because it is. I had nothing to do with 3PO when I finally read the script. But every time he came on the page, I understood him. I didn't understand Darth Vader or even particularly Luke Skywalker or any of them. You know, they were just humans doing a thing. And there was something about 3PO right from that initial initial photo uh, painting that Mount Macquarie did that um, I really I really liked. Something touched me in that. And then the script came, and there's a picture of the script indeed. Um, and yeah, I really felt for it. And the, and the next day, I said, you know, can I play the part? And the next day, I was having all this done to me to make. Um, a, a plaster cast of my body and so on. And uh, you know the rest, the rest is history. But some of the stuff in here you you didn't know about. So, so obviously the suit was a, a big part of it and I know you talk about it a bit in the book, but you know, what's it like for you know, an actor, you, you've been on stage and then suddenly you're encased in, in this costume and we can't see your face, which obviously is a huge part of your, your arsenal as an actor. Sure, uh, very much so. I think I was lucky that at drama school I'd done all uh, those exercises <clears throat> when you put on a plastic blank face and then you try and achieve some kind of um, emotion, action, without your eyes and your mouth and your eyebrows and so on. So that, that wasn't so hard for me, but one of the, the really important things is that uh, Liz Moore, the sculptor, made this face that was utterly, utterly beautiful. Well, you know what he looks like better than me. Um, just looking, there's a picture of her somewhere because she was adorable. And um, she constructed, she, a uh, tiny picture of Liz there, looking very, very 70s. Can you see? Yeah. She never saw 3 ever come to the screen. She died in a car accident. It's really sad. Um, I worked out what you can do by using your shoulders, using anything that's left apart from your face. Kind of weird, but it, it sort of worked. Some of it works better than other pieces, I think, but on the whole, it's amazing what you can achieve with just a little movement or a sharp movement, or what you know, you can work it out. It, obviously, it, it, what, certainly in the early days, it wasn't very comfortable to be in the suit, and especially when you're in the desert. Did, as the years have gone on, have they made it easier? You know, it, it, did the suit sure. the guys The guys really worked hard to, to make it as comfortable as possible. And um, it got better. We tweaked it. Again, it's in the book how eventually I carved up the hands. But one of the things was that I didn't have hands that worked. They were bigger than mine. I had to club things to death, really, to pick them up. Apart from that wonderful uh, bit with the, uh, it was this hand. Um, 
what was it called, the comm link. You know? But that was done with a sticky pad in my hand, so I slapped it. <clears throat> it stuck to my hand, and I've become. In fact, in that shot, I was only wearing this much costume. So, you know, film's all about cheating, really. Kind of fun. But over the years, yes, we made it better. And then JJ, of course, gave me a new suit, albeit with a red arm, it's in the book. Um, and that worked terrifically, the best bit, the head can be on and off in six seconds, as opposed to half an hour. So I could breathe much better. There were other problems that we had to get around, and certain things I do in The Rise of Skywalker, uh, thanks partly, uh, <laughs> sometimes from the waist down, due to the magic of ILM, total teamwork, and even I can't tell. <laughs> Racing up to Archie's freighter there, very exciting. Now, obviously, the Skywalker saga is over. Do you think the three C three PO saga is over? I mean, do you do you think you'll play him again? Would you like to, or do you think you want to finish there? I'd say in in writing, I suggested to JJ that he's killed off three PO because in uh, episode seven and eight he didn't have too much to do, and uh, JJ said, "Not on my watch." And it's true, 3PO still exists. And indeed, at the moment, not in films, if, if ever again. But in other guises, uh, even at the moment, 3PO is existing. You see, he's too good a character to let go. What can I say? <laughs> he's more important than I am. <laughs> well, of course, well, we all hope to see him again. Um, so do you have a message for fans uh, for, for this Star Wars day? Oh, I, su I suppose that I would say um, we really wouldn't be having a Star Wars day without the fans, without those people who went unknowingly into the first uh, screening back in 1977, because there wasn't any advertising, people just went. And, and then they ran out and they got their friends and their friends got their friends. In those days, the word viral, well, it didn't really exist in the theatrical sense. Now, sadly, it's a word that's come to haunt us. But Star Wars did go viral because of the fans. And um, they have been one of the builders of this thing. All right, George and all those uh, other people, JJ and so on, and, and the actors too. Um, but it's been a kind of teamwork. And, and therefore, I think people should be really proud of, of being a part of it and um, enjoy. And enjoy the arguments, enjoy all the things that Star Wars bring you, whether it's it's a copy of the book or it's it's a Blu-ray or, or or it's an audio version of the book. And you can actually doubt this is a physical one, uh, which eventually when we meet again at one of your events, um, we can we can sign this. Um, and all these things, whether it's a a book or a lightsaber or whatever, you have extended Star Wars into your homes, you've become part of the universe. And one of the things I love, of course, is, is people who've met as fans and uh, they become pals, they become part of the 501st, um, they get married to <laughs> the strangers of the Imperial March, <laughs> and they call their kids. You can layer, um, uh, and and so it goes on. It's a whole world out there, um, and people like to argue. The good side, the dark side, whatever. Who shoots who first? Who cares? Um, but one thing I want you to, as fans, to argue the points. To say I didn't like this. I like this. I did. I don't say I hated this. Don't. There's some extremism going on, which is totally unnecessary. You know, there's a, there's points of view. The great thing about the whole Star Wars saga, it's always been full of debatable points. You know, so you know, stay a fan, stay nice, stay stay polite, stay calm. Yeah. Cool. Well, massive thank you, Anthony, for talking to us. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Well. You know, I have great respect for the, the uh, shows you put on. Really, really good. I will be there again. So will the fans. So uh, stay safe, because then you can be at the next event when we do it together. If you don't stay safe, you're going to miss out.
Mm -hmm. So look, here he is. This is the one you want to see, isn't it? Um, thank you for watching and may the force be with you. How corny is that? I keep doing this terrible. <laughs> <laughs> How are you celebrating Star Wars Day? Whether you're dressing up as a Wampa, dressing up your lightsaber skills, or simply planning an 11 movie lockdown marathon, give us a shout on social media tagging at MCM Comic Con.